I'm sure many of you are screaming out loud, David, what the heck are you doing? There is bird droppings right by your cooking area. Yeah, kind of ironic for a health food video, but you know what? <laughs> I think we're all a little bit oversensitive about this sort of stuff. But you do you. If I haven't already mentioned, I'm not a doctor. This is not health advice for you. Please consult your personal medical professionals. Don't blame me for anything I do that you choose to do. That's on you. Where I've been eating a way too much processed junk food. Uh, and so I'm cutting all that out again. And it's, it's not the easiest thing, even though I know the why I should do it, why it's damaging to my health. I felt the changes and the benefits, but it's still difficult. They're basically like a drug, legalized drugs. Got some rolled oats, and I got some walnuts. That's it. Boring, right? Food for thought? <laughs> yeah, I'm old enough that I find my own little puns and jokes quite amusing. Live super clean, do all the right things that I learned, do all these amazing things, achieve things I never would have thought I could have done, and then I backslide. And I started eating things I shouldn't eat, and my health starts to come back down. And you're like, what is wrong with me? Why would I do that to myself? And yet we all do it. I'm sorry if you don't like rambling talk. You've come to the wrong place. There will be some chapters, so you can skip to certain bits, but I don't mind just rambling from time to time. Hopefully you don't mind it either. Well, good morning everybody. Yeah, hope your day's off to a good one. Mine certainly is. I decided to come down to the river uh, near where I live today because uh, I wanted to start off a new uh, series of videos that I intend to create and upload shortly, this being the first of them. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to do them all in a one after the other. I suspect they'll be interspersed between things, but we never know. We'll see how the mood and inspiration strikes. Uh, but recently I put up a community post asking the sorts of things that people might be interested in seeing, and one of my subscribers said uh, they'd be interested in seeing videos on uh, eating better. Now, there will be a deeper video getting into why this particular subject is important to me and I guess you could very well be asking why would we listen to David? What the heck does he know about this subject? Well, um, a few years ago I did qualify as a, a certified holistic health and nutrition coach and there's a long backstory to why that even became a thing but it was due to my own personal health taking a very serious turn back in ooh, 2012, I want to say, and really coming ahead through 2013. I spent a lot of time going through the, uh, the medical system, and I'm grateful it was there. They certainly tried their best to figure out what the heck was going on with me. Uh, and we'll deep dive more into that later, but to kind of put it in a nutshell for you for the purpose of this first video, um, I spent oh, maybe two years going through that medical system, tests, specialists, what the heck could be wrong with him, and multiple MRIs, neurologist visits, because they were beginning to wonder if maybe I had multiple cirrhosis, the amount of full body symptoms of all different things going on. And I can tell you that was quite terrifying at the time. Um, but what ultimately ended up happening was they said, there's nothing wrong with you. And I could, I got the sense pretty quickly after that, they really weren't sure what to do with me at that point. Um, there was definite suggestions. It was probably uh, all in my head, perhaps. Um, I was not so sure about that myself. Um, but anyway, 
it sent me down a bit of a journey into finding out what could help me perhaps if the typical medical system seemed unable to despite their best efforts and long and short of it I found some solutions and the major one was to do with my diet I was eating what you may have heard as the, the typical Western diet or SAD diet that's the standard American diet uh, for those who may not know I live in Canada so kind of North America we have a very similar dietary pattern to uh, our cousins down south and many people across kind of industrialized western worlds now um, I had no idea really just how much of an impact it was having on my health and it was having a massive impact given what I went through um, I'm going to share with you more in these following videos what kind of the what I actually went through how I came out of it the resources I used and found that helped me get through and ultimately heal um, and I suspect you'll find it quite eye-opening if you've never heard about this yourself and another thing that made me think about doing this was ow there's so much information out there by far more qualified people than me many of whom <laughs> I got the advice from through various listening to their podcasts, YouTubes, reading their books and so forth but it surprised me how many people still have never heard of any of this. That was part of why I got that qualification because I wanted to give a little bit more legitimacy to what I learnt myself and sharing that with others but I never really shared it with that many people. Some. Um, so I thought I don't need to be doing this but yeah maybe I did. Maybe mine is just one more voice to help elevate this message that you likely do have a lot of control yourself in your health destiny now i'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater the medical system has a lot going for it i'm grateful it's there uh, i don't doubt there'll be a time in my life where i really may need it for other things and i'll be grateful it exists but i've come to believe very distinctly that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Sometimes it can be, or should be, a balance of both things. So, with that being said, this first video is to show you a very simple breakfast that I have, which I've eaten for many, many years, and uh, fuels my day. It's helpful and it's super easy and you can mix and match it whether you want to have sweet things or savory feeling totally up to you so on with david's outdoor cookery show <laughs> First off though, I think it's time for a cup of tea. I've already had my coffee, so time for a rooibos. Quite possibly one of my favorite teas right now. And I'm sorry, if you don't like rambling talk, you've come to the wrong place. There will be some chapters, so you can skip to certain bits, but I don't mind just rambling from time to time. Hopefully you don't mind it either. So this little stove, I can't even remember what it's called. Is it on here? Trangia. This is a little Trangia stove. It's an alcohol stove, so you can use all sorts of different things with it. I've taken to using, I think it's methylated spirits, because it's super inexpensive and easy to get. And burns pretty clean, so there's not, not much in the way of soot, which is nice, but it is super not good for you if you were to uh, get it in and things, so be careful. Also being very careful about what I'm doing here by the river because there's a lot of water, but I don't want to dilute it, but I don't want to get that in there. So we're going to close that up.
So these little things go on the stove and get them out. <laughs> and act like a little uh, stove top. Like pot on there, shall we? <laughs> we? Probably could cook it right in that. I've never or heat the water in that. I've never tried. There. Stable. This is also the first video, other than what I did about testing this new microphone gadget I've got. So hopefully this is sound is picking up, otherwise this was all for nothing. I don't recommend putting your hand over an open flame, but because it's such a pure burning thing, it's hard to see the flame. But that's also why it doesn't create a lot of soot smoke. So now, this is what B footage looks like. Or B roll. A lot worse places to start your day, huh? We're we'll waiting for that to boil. Let's get a few other pieces out. What do I need?
So while we're waiting for that to boil, uh, I'm sure many of you are screaming out loud, David, what the heck are you doing? There is bird droppings right by your cooking area. Yeah, kind of ironic for a health food video, but you know what? <laughs> I think we're all a little bit oversensitive about this sort of stuff, but you do you. If I haven't already mentioned, I'm not a doctor. This is not health advice for you. Please consult your personal medical professionals. Don't blame me for anything I do that you choose to do. That's on you. All right, so here's the ingredients for this morning's breakfast. Super, super simple. Got some rolled oats and I got some walnuts. That's it. Boring, right? Aha, uh -huh. it was when I first began this whole health kick many, many years ago now. But I can tell you, not anymore. So that is 250 mils, or no, I lie, I'm getting confused with the water. This is half a cup of rolled oats, and just a handful of that. Now one of the reasons I really like rolled oats, they're quick, they're easy, they're super affordable, they're very healthful, in my opinion, and it certainly worked for me. But you can kind of do just about anything with it, which is what I really like. So, as you can see, super easy, super simple for a, a morning out here with the little stove. It was back in my actual kitchen in my house, not uncommon. I'd have flax seeds, hemp parts, would go in that. And then from that base, if I wanted, I could go something more sweet, add various fruits, blueberries, bananas, raisins are a favorite of mine. Uh, or you could go uh, more savory, and that's actually what I do most of the time. So into that, I might add um, some broccoli, sometimes celery, peas, corn, quite often spinach gets tossed in there. Uh, sky's the limit. And then if you want to add any seasonings, uh, go, go knock your lights out. I like something we have here called poultry, which uh, truth be told, I forget what's in it. But I think it's things like rosemary, uh, thyme, that kind of thing. Uh, but I've done curried oats before. People think I'm nuts. Uh, I like curried oats. Uh, paprika, smoked paprika. You can pretty much do whatever you like, just depending on what you feel like. But the base is easy. And it takes 10 minutes, if that. If I can make this out here on a little stove, you can certainly do it inside in your house. at the boil. Time for tea. Beauty. Let's get that out of the way. Time for some more b-roll. Now where rolled oats are concerned, it's one part oats to two parts water. So if I've got a half a cup of oats, that's a cup of water. I guess depending on how hungry you are, you can have as much as you want. I get this huge bag at a place called Costco for about 12 bucks. And it's organic, glyphosate free. That's an important one, glyphosate free wherever you can though. We don't want perfection to be the enemy of doing something. It's not quite the same, but something along those lines.
One thing I don't think enough of us really truly understand or appreciate is this low grade not feeling awesome that I think a lot of people live with but have gotten so used to living with it that they're not even aware that there's a different way of being. It often takes a pretty catastrophic illness, injury, something in our life to force us to want to make any change or to even examine how our life is in order to perhaps make that change and recognize something needs to be done, whatever that may be. That was certainly the case for me. It took that whole significant health uh, event or events to drag, I said, dragged on for a while to kind of force me to become aware of a different life that I could lead if I wanted to. Now, don't get me wrong, it was super difficult. Uh, learning something is relatively straightforward. Being able to then implement it is something else. And um, you'll likely find you'll go through ebbs and flows of doing things super awesome and backsliding and moving forward again and backsliding. And it is what it is. Just wake up the next day and try again to do a little better than you did the day before. And I think that's true of just about everything in life, isn't it? But the ability, ooh, don't drop that. <laughs> the ability to be able to come down here, get up, feel motivated to do something like this, for me at least, kind of relies on me feeling clear-minded, feeling well. And I am by no means perfect, although I'll never admit that. Um, I've gone through periods in my life where I've eaten super clean, about as healthy as you can possibly imagine, um, and felt the best I've ever felt, allowed me to do some truly incredible things. It's kind of pat myself on the back there a little bit, but it's true. And I'll share again more of what those things are with you. Some of it's already on the channel, but uh, without the context, the backstory that led me to that, it's not always that obvious. But anyway, do these live super clean, do all the right things that I learned, do all these amazing things, achieve things I never would have thought I could have done, and then I backslide. And I started eating things I shouldn't eat, and my health starts to come back down. And you're like, what is wrong with me? Why would I do that to myself? And yet we all do it. Well, shouldn't, shouldn't generalize with the all, but I'm pretty confident many of us do that. But then you pick yourself up, change things up, move forward and I've done that several times and right now I'm back in one of those kind of modes where I've been eating a way too much processed junk food uh, and so I'm cutting all that out again and it's it's not the easiest thing even though I know the why I should do it why it's damaging to my health I felt the changes and the benefits but it's still difficult they're basically like a drug legalized drugs that's my view on them um, but again, as I'm slowly pulling them out, it doesn't take long for your body to respond and kick in and make those changes. All right, looks like we're boiling. Perfect. Oh, let's turn that in there. We're just going to pour the whole thing of oats right in there. Give it a little swish. Now the only trick with this Trangia stove, it's not the easiest, or at least not for me, I've not found it super easy. I'm just going to put that there to dry off. Sorry, I got distracted by my tea bag. It's not the easiest to control the temperature. There is a little thingy you can put on it that helps to almost put it into simmer mode, but I've not had a lot of luck with it. And it's, well, it doesn't work if you've got these little brackets on. But, whatever, does the job. Now, these oats, so it's 
it came to the boil. And normally what I would do is just let it simmer at home, but like I said, it's a little tricky on here, so it is what it is, we'll just play around with it. But it doesn't take very long. I take oats with me quite a lot on my various camping trips and one of the reasons is you can do overnight oats where you just get the oat, submerge it in, I use water, I think you can use milk or other things if you want but the point of doing it is I don't have to cook it if I don't want to or don't want to bring a whole bunch of additional equipment or you can um, or well, things like milk with oats would need potentially refrigeration if you're out in the height of summer, which would be a problem. And so you can just use water, leave it overnight in like an airtight kind of container. And then basically in the morning, they're good to eat. I've done that quite a lot. And then I just throw in all the mixings that I want. Or if you then want to heat it up, it's basically cooked. So you can throw it in, give it a little warm up, and you wouldn't use as much fuel. So eating healthy can also help you with backpacking. Uh, all I can see now is those bird droppings. Uh, funny. So I wonder if you can tell from where the angle is that the trees around here. We're very much into the fall season now. It's early October as I'm filming this. It's like a lot of those oranges and reds and so forth beginning. Now where I'm from originally in England, we would call this the autumn season, but here it's fall. I don't know why they call it fall. I wonder if it's because the leaves are falling Maybe it's something as simple as that. If you know, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested. I could Google it, but I'm going to rely on you to help me out with this one. So it's getting pretty close. Almost out of fuel in that. Which is fine. I got more if I need it. But I don't think we're going to need it. Oh, it's kind of nice. I've not actually used the transit all that much. I was tending to use something I've got called the Firebox. It's on, again, some of my earlier videos, if you want to have a look. Um, and then I've just, uh, this 
last season there I've been using the what's it called the is it MSR the pocket rocket little stove which is quite cool this transient is pretty neat yeah so I was able to get a cup of tea and a full breakfast on one or so of those with the fuel it's still going we'll just let that burn out I have to put the fuel back in the bottle and that can cool down. Okay. And so next. Just going to add these uh, handful of walnuts right in there. Sure, we don't leave any of that behind. Cheers. Not sure what you say when you're doing it with food. So I guess we'll say cheers. Maybe yum. So that's simple folks. A little bit of water, a little bit of oats, a little bit of walnuts. Like I said, you want to add some extra flavors? Blueberries, bananas, pretty much any fruit you can think of. Raspberries are good, blackberries are great. Throw them in there. If you want to go savory, peas, corn, carrots, celery, spinach, doesn't really matter. Whatever kind of thing you like. You add a little bit of potato, you probably want to cook that ahead of time. And then I like to add, as I've already said, flax seeds, hemp hearts. They're great for extra protein if you want it. The fiber content, particularly the flax seeds as well, is awesome. Fiber is so, so important. Another thing we'll talk about on another video. But when all said and done, something is affordable because it's super cheap, like I said. Something is easy to do. You can start your day off in a really helpful way. Maybe this is the first thing you do to change your dietary patterns if it's something you're thinking about doing for yourself. And just play around with it. If you want to add a little salt, add a little salt. If you need to add a little sugar, add a little sugar. I'm not an advocate of sugar. Personally, cut as much of that as you can. But again, let's not let perfection be the enemy of some progress. It is no doubt an awful lot better than what you're perhaps doing right now, whether it be box cereals, those kind of pre-done oatmeal packets with all the sugar and crap in them. Cut all that out and start somewhere. Your body will thank you. Your mind will thank you. I'm utterly convinced the more I look into this subject and the more I uh, experienced it myself, that our mental health is intrinsically tied to our overall health, in particular, how our body is feeling because of what we're choosing to fuel it with, the food and the drinks and things that we put in. 
I have noticed that my mental health is more is better and more resilient when I'm eating well. If I start putting in too much processed stuff, junk foods, whatnot, that's usually where my mental health will start to diminish, particularly in its resilience. Eating, even when I was eating at my bestest, bestest, purest whole foods, all the rest of it, um, I still have moments, uh, periods of time where uh, I suppose you could call it depression, um, struggling with the day. So I don't think it makes you immune, but I notice that those periods of time are much shorter and way less frequent. Um, and that's easier to deal with because, you know, chances are it ain't going to last that long. The relative severity. Again, I've only got myself to go by. I can't compare my experience to anybody else because it's all internal. Um, but perhaps if you're suffering with things like that, this could be a start point to help. Again, talk to your medical professionals, please. I'm just sharing what I've learned on myself, but it may be different for you. It's kind of a shame we've got to say that these days. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of bothers me. Common sense, maybe another lost skill, but that's all right. Hmm. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope it gave you some ideas. Food for thought. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm old enough that I find my own little puns and jokes quite amusing. Um, give it a try. If you give it a try, maybe do it for a few times and let me know what you think. Notice any changes? Do you feel a little improvement? Do you feel a little bit motivated to carry on? I'd love to know in the comments below. Or if there's something you want to see, let me know. All the best.